Hello, and welcome to the March 2024 Real Estate Market Update, brought to you by the Reby Homes team. While there are certainly some changes coming to the real estate industry after the National Association of Realtors, or NAR, settled their lawsuit, and we'll be touching on that a bit in this market update, but first, let's take a look at where things are nationally. Starting things off with everyone's favorite topic, interest rates. We started this year with some hopeful news from the Fed stating that they were going to cut interest rates three times this year. However, inflation and CPI reports have caused them to pause making any cuts to avoid committing a policy error similar to what happened in the 70s. Inflation slowed and interest rates were cut too soon, causing inflation to skyrocket. Although inflation has certainly come down since early 2022, it's not quite where the Fed wants it in order to make any moves. We've been bouncing around the 3 to 4% range for the last six months, and it seems the Fed is really hoping to reach that 2% mark, so we'll continue to keep a close eye on inflation rates. Here are mortgage rate projections from Fannie Mae. You can see that they adjusted their predictions downward about half a percent as of February this year. They're predicting by Q3 of this year will be in the low sixes and potentially under the 6% mark by the end of Q4. And some more good news. More economists are starting to see a soft landing when it comes to whether or not we'll be seeing a recession in the next 12 months. January 2023, 61% of economists believe that we would see a recession in the next 12 months. Whereas January of this year, things have flipped and now 61% of economists believe we will not be seeing a recession in the next 12 months. Unemployment is not spiking and is expected to stay below 5%, which bodes well for the housing market. And as for foreclosures, all foreclosure metrics are down. Active inventory is down 2.2% from this time last year and 25% from pre-pandemic levels. And both foreclosure sales and foreclosure starts are down about 17% year over year. However, we are still roughly 40% below pre-pandemic levels when it comes to foreclosure starts. And finally, home prices. Here's a look at the final 2023 home price appreciation rate from Case Schiller, CoreLogic, Black Knight, Freddie Mac, and FHFA. All five reported a 5.5 to 7% appreciation rate, with the U.S. national average being 5.5%. For reference, the 43-year average is 4.86%. So 2023 started the year with floods of headlines about a market crash and home values decreasing by 20% or more and ended with above average appreciation rates. Chief economist from CoreLogic, Selma Hep, sums it up well. As mortgage rates continue to hover in the 7% range, it'll be difficult to convince existing homeowners to move at that current time. Nevertheless, a recent surge in mortgage application data has shown following a drop in rates, buyers are anxiously awaiting to jump into the market. That means 2024 is likely to show another year of home price highs. And to wrap things up, here are the forecasts for home price appreciation from Goldman Sachs, MBA, Zillow, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and NAR. All have increased their original projections from November 2023 and are currently estimating an average appreciation rate of 3.2%. That'll do it for our national update. Now a quick look at our local market update here in the Phoenix metro area. Active listings are up year over year from roughly 13,500 to 15,500 available listings. This is great for buyers who have been on the hunt as they now have more options. However, it's still below pre-pandemic averages around 17 to 18,000. With interest rates still hovering around 7%, a lot of buyers remain unable to buy, which is keeping the market balanced. Once rates do come down, the expectation is that more buyers will enter the market. If that does happen, then we can expect to see the inventory start to go quicker. Both average price per square foot and monthly average sales price are up 7% year over year, with the average sales price being just under 588000 15% of listings in February closed above list price, which is up 2% year over year, but down from the 22% in July of 2023. The average amount above list price is $5,000, and February ended with 46% of all closed listings having seller concessions, the median amount being $9,500. Average days on market is 67, which is down from 81 in January 2023, but up from 53 in October 2023. Bottom line, if the house is priced well in a good location and in good condition, it's likely going in a weekend with multiple offers over list price. If the home needs some work, is priced a little high, or isn't the most desirable community, it's likely sitting a little bit longer and making consistent and necessary price adjustments. And the last thing we'll touch on for our local update is foreclosures. Foreclosures are indicated by the number of notices of trustee sales, and February had 311 notices. To put things into perspective, the average amount from 2008 to 2011 was between 5,000 and 11,000 notices. The average during the pandemic was under 100 due to loan forbearance programs, so it's no surprise were up from that time frame. And the average from pre-pandemic years in a more normal market ranged from 400 to 800. So to be consistently under 400 for the last two years is incredibly positive. All in all, we're seeing a pretty balanced market here in Arizona. There are opportunities for both buyers and sellers, and as long as interest rates remain the same, we can expect that to continue. Once rates show even the slightest trend downward, however, we can expect
expect a jump in mortgage applications and buyer activity, which will put upward pressure on prices. And finally, on to the big news surrounding the NAR settlement. On March 14th, the National Association of Realtors reached an agreement with the plaintiffs that resulted in a $418 million payout and some changes to the current payment structure for buyer's agents. And if you're asking yourself, why is this important to you? Well, hang tight, because I'm going to explain. For decades, buyer agent commissions have essentially been built into the list price of a home. Buyers would purchase property through financing or cash, and the seller would offer a co-broke to the buyer's agent in the MLS which they would then pay using the proceeds from the sale. This lawsuit is changing that. Sellers are no longer able to offer commissions to the buyer's agent in the MLS, and buyers will now be required to sign a buyer broker agreement, which obligates them to pay their own agent on top of their down payment and closing costs. This does not mean that sellers cannot offer to pay a buyer agent's commission. They can still offer to pay a commission, they just can't advertise it in the MLS. They can, however, offer it in a different form. For example, a seller concession that the buyer can then choose to use to pay their agent. So what does this mean for buyers? Well, for starters, keep in mind that this hasn't passed yet. It's set to be approved in July, so until then, nothing is changing. However, the likelihood is that this will get approved and this will be our new norm. So it's important to be educated on how it will impact you as a buyer. The most important thing for buyers to look for in an agent will be strong negotiating skills. Paying your agent commission on top of your down payment and closing costs is simply not realistic for most buyers. On the other hand, representing yourself as a buyer is not only a red flag to many sellers, but can lead to serious financial harm to both parties. So if you want representation, but no paying your agent just isn't an option, you're going to want to find an agent that is skilled at negotiating and can help you get their commission covered. It also means you need to be more than confident that your agent will be transparent and communicate exactly what you're agreeing to. There are going to be new forms, documents, and regulations put in place that put you as the buyer on the hook for paying your own agent, and you need to know what you're agreeing to. Now, this is still very new, and no one knows how it's going to affect the real estate market or consumers quite yet, so it's important to avoid blindly following anyone who talks about what you should or shouldn't be doing. This is not the first time there have been changes in the real estate world, and it won't be the last. With change comes new programs, opportunities, and guidelines. The best thing you can do is stay up to date with the latest information, ask your real estate agent questions, do your own research, and know what your options are. We want our sphere, clients, friends, and family to know that this doesn't change anything for us. Our top priority is to lead, guide, and protect our clients, and that's what we're going to continue to do. As always, we're happy to answer any questions you may have regarding this settlement or any other real estate related topics, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next month.